Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater Sound, and today I'm going to teach a beginner class on control voltages, or CV. So as I mentioned, this is a beginner's class on control voltages, or CV. And if you've ever used control voltages at all, you're probably not going to find most of this information helpful because it really is simple. But this class is going to be as easy as possible to understand what's going on. I'm not going to use any math. I'm not going to use any diagrams. I'm just going to explain and show lots of different examples of using different sources of control voltages on the same thing and using those control voltages on different things and to show how they mix and match and what they do. So first, what is a control voltage? A control voltage is simply an amount of voltage of electricity going through a cable and you can have none, you can have a positive amount, and sometimes you can have a negative amount. And instead of worrying about all the electricityness about it, I just want you to think of this as minimum, this as maximum, and this as negative maximum, for lack of a better word. And so different things, whether it's a pedal or an LFO that's sweeping or a keyboard from low to high, all of those are doing the same thing. They're simply sending a voltage from the lowest value, which is nothing, all the way up to the highest value. Or in the case of, a, of an LFO, uh, sometimes they go above zero and below zero, but, it, but it's always just a motion from nothing to something, from nothing to negative, back to nothing. And these voltages simply do the exact same thing that knobs do. All right, so for my first example, I'm going to use a filter. It's set to low pass, which means lows always go through, but the highs are getting cut. And I'm turning a knob called cutoff, which as I rotate it counterclockwise, it gets darker. And as I rotate it clockwise, it gets brighter. But it's important to understand that I'm not actually turning the filter cutoff. I'm turning a knob that has voltage going through it. That voltage is making the filter get brighter and darker. And so it really doesn't matter whether I'm turning this knob or another knob that's also sending voltage to the filter. So I'm going to take this knob called an attenuator, which is a fancy word for making things less. And in this case, it's going to make less voltage. So if I don't plug anything else in this attenuator, it just generates voltage all by itself. And you'll see that the sound of this knob turning can be replicated by turning that knob if I take a control voltage out to the filter in and turn that knob. It doesn't matter how the voltage gets to the thing. It just matters how much voltage in total gets to it. And why do I say in total? Because the original knob still works. So, but they add together. So I can turn this one up, and now this one adds more to that. Or I could turn it way down, and this knob won't have as much of an effect. And so it's always good to be aware that when you're adding control voltage to something that already has a knob, that knob may still be working. And so in, now instead of turning a knob, I'm going to go to an LFO. That's a low frequency oscillator, a uh, fancy word for a slow wiggler. Basically, it's something that wiggles in voltage. You can't hear it, but it wiggles in voltage up and down. And I'm going to take that uh, in a triangle shape and put it to this filter and it should make the filter wiggle up and down in exactly the same shape as the voltage. But what if we like the rate that that LFO is wah, wah, wah but we don't like how much it's doing it, or we don't like the depth, right? That's where this attenuator comes in handy. So instead of coming straight out of the LFO and sending this up and down voltage to the filter cutoff, 
I'm going to first go into that attenuator's input and then come out of that and go right back to the same place. And right now, I have the attenuator set to zero, which means none of the voltage from this triangle wave is going to get to the cutoff. And so it's very still. But as I turn it up, you're going to hear the depth of that LFO moving the filter. And notice that I'm not changing how fast it's going, I'm changing how deep it's sweeping the filter. And remember that I said that in the world of control voltages, the knob that you're sending voltage to also matters. It's also added. So I can not only set the depth of how much it's moving up and down, I can then move that area of where it's moving up and down. So listen to that. So first I'll add a little bit of depth. Okay. Now notice that I'm going to move that depth amount into different parts of the filter cutoff. So it's still doing the same amount, it's just doing it in a different area of the cutoff frequency. And now more depth. And now I'm going to use a different LFO. This one, I was showing you the triangle out. This one over here has lots of different waves. And I'm going to start with a square wave. So instead of a nice triangle wave, this one's very choppy. It's a square wave. It literally is in the shape of a square. But all it's doing is sending out max voltage, minimum voltage, or negative voltage, depending on what kind of LFO you have. So now what you can hear is the filter's going to be opening and closing in a very choppy way. And again, I have control over the speed that that voltage is going up and down. I have control over how deep or how wide that spread is from all the way from nothing. to the full amount, and I can control in what range that depth moves by moving this knob. So, so far we've done waves that are symmetrical. Uh, we've done triangles that are symmetrical and squares that are symmetrical. But now I'm going to do a wave that's different on one side than the other. So here is a ramp. And I've talked about this attenuator, but it's actually a rather special attenuator in that it can turn a, a voltage upside down. And so whenever I've been saying I'm going to zero, I'm actually going to 12 o'clock. But if I go left or counterclockwise at 12 o'clock, I'm going to add more of that voltage but upside down or reverse polarity. So now you should hear instead of it going up quickly and falling slowly, it's going to go up slowly and fall quickly. So this is to the left of center and I'm going to go to the right of center and you can hear the wave flip upside down. Sometimes those are called attenuverters, which is combining two words, uh, attenuator and inverter. Inverter meaning it flips it upside down. So uh, attenuators are super handy for in instances where you have a control, but you wish it worked backwards. Plug it into a attenuverter, turn it counterclockwise, and now that voltage amount is flipped upside down. So now we're going to use a new LFO shape, and it's called sample and hold. It's labeled here as SH out. And it basically sends steps or samples of random voltages. And it holds them for a certain amount of time, then it moves on to the next one. How often it moves on to the next one is based on your rate. And how deep it does that, again, will be based on our attenuator. 
and again, it's going to filter. I've turned the resonance up a little bit, so it should create a sound that you recognize. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. So uh, that's how that sound is done. So you just set the rate to where you want it, the depth to where you want it, and the cutoff to where you want it, and you get that. And again, it doesn't matter what the source of that is. So I'm going to use this device called a CP251. It's basically a source of control. It lets you plug things in and plug things out uh, that either add control voltages or modify the control voltages. And there's even one column here that creates control voltages. So I'm just going to take the triangle out. And the point being that it should sound identical to when I have a triangle wave from over here. And I can increase the rate. And if I want to change the amount, I can change the attenuator. If I want to change where that motion is happening in the cutoff, I can turn the cutoff knob. All of them are all going to the same place. And they're just all adding up or subtracting from each other, depending on where they're at. All right, but now let's say I didn't want to use that attenuator. I, I want to use an attenuator that's over here. So instead of coming out of the triangle wave going right to the filter, I'm going to come out of the triangle wave. This one uses quarter inch plugs. I'm going to go into an attenuator. Then I'm going to come out of the attenuator and plug back into the filter. Now, it should do the same exact thing, except that I can control the depth from here. And it really doesn't matter if the control voltage is going to a filter, or an oscillator, or an amplifier, or an effect, or the rate of an LFO, or the speed of a sequencer. Each of them do their minimum thing when they get the minimum voltage, and their maximum thing when they get their maximum voltage. So I'm going to take now um, the output of my LFO over here, and I'm setting it to a sine wave, and I'm going to send it to a single oscillator. It should be pretty radical because there's nothing attenuating it. So it's going from min to max. I mean, you could really hear it's going from pulses to dog whistle. Okay, but let's say we didn't want to go that much. So again, we go into an attenuator. We come out of the attenuator. And we go back to where we first were, which is the pitch in. And now with this at zero, nothing will happen. Got to be pretty precise on pitch. Okay. Now, as I turn it up, you're going to hear more of that modulation. And so what you're hearing as it's spreading is you're hearing the high pitch is going higher, the low pitch is going lower, as this control voltage is going from min to max. And again, I'm repeating myself, but it's important to understand that it doesn't matter if that voltage comes from an LFO, an expression pedal, uh, a sequencer, um, a knob turn, or some other voltage source. And so now we're going to use an envelope, which sends voltages. And so I'm just going to pull out of the LFO, and I'm going to go an envelope out. And an envelope, basically, when you press a key, it goes from min to max at the attack time. Then it falls at the attack time. It'll sit at the sustain level if it's up, and then fall away. And so I'll do that here. You're going to hear the pitch jump up quickly, then fall to somewhere in the middle. And when I let go, it's going to fall away. Now it's in the middle. Now I let go. OK. 
Okay? And I can slow the attack time. I can shorten the decay time. I can make it very, very quick. And in this case, even though it's a one-shot thing, I still can control the depth of it with my attenuator. So again, zero doesn't do anything. And it, notice that the time isn't changing, just the distance, the amount that it's changing the pitch. All right, so now I'm going to show you how control voltages relate to the expression pedal in on guitar pedals. Uh, many guitar pedals have expression pedal jacks. And then I'm taking this uh, electroharmonic stereo polyphase. Um, it's an old pedal, but it was just something in my office that happened to have expression pedal input. And I'm going to set it up so that as I move this expression pedal, I'm going to be letting all or only some or none of the voltage that's coming out of this, going into this, going back into it, and it's going to let me sweep the phase. And uh, you probably never thought about it before, but this is just control voltage. Here's one interesting difference, though. If you've ever used an expression pedal, you'll notice that most of them have three conductors. It's called a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. So it's three wires going to it. And that's because most pedals that say expression pedal send voltage out to your pedal and this is just a variable resistor a potentiometer and the gears here just move it it's no different than moving any other knob and it takes the voltage that it got from the pedal runs it through this variable resistor and sends all or some of it back and so you just plug this TRS plug right into the expression pedal jack and uh, I'm going to make a complex uh, cord here uh, with four oscillators just to help you hear the effect of this pedal. So here's a single oscillator. Okay, nice pretty sound. So I'll hold a note. which is a very pretty sound, and it's even prettier if you add some stereo ping pong delay to it. So, very obvious, as I move the pedal, I'm sweeping the phase of this phase shifter. All right, now I'm going to take the plug from the expression pedal out, and I'm going to put a cable that has quarter inch on one end and 3.5 millimeter on the other end. And the idea is that if I plug the output of this instead of into that pedal, I plug it into something that's sending uh, an LFO, so this is a triangle that's going up and down. I should be able to sweep that phase with this triangle. Let's try it. And notice that I can change the rate. And because it's analog, this LFO will go up into what they call audio range. In other words, it'll start going so fast that it'll seem more like a note. But you can hear that what it's doing is no different than when I move the pedal up and down. It's just that instead of the voltage going up and down because I'm moving the pedal, the voltage is going up and down because it's coming out of an LFO that has a voltage that's going up and down. All right, so now I'm going to show you a new source of voltage, and that is a Moog EtherWave Plus. Now, normally with a theremin, you associate that sci-fi 50 sound, the but we're not doing that. Instead, we're taking a control voltage out of it. 
which you can't hear, but you can hear what it does to other things. So, for example, if I go to pitch, then you will hear that Sci-Fi 50 sound. And without it plugged in, it doesn't do anything. Okay, and I can do the same thing to filter cutoff. But really, it's no different than me turning the knob. It's just a different way to turn the knob, especially if I have a sequence going. Let's see what I got here. some echo. And now um, I can actually change the echo. So I'm going to go to the echo time. And I should be able to just change the, the time of uh, the echo. So let's see what that does. Very trippy. Um, it can go to anything that can be moved. So now I'm going to use yet another source of control voltage. In this case, it's the DFAM or drummer from another mother. It's a semi modular analog percussion synth from Moog. Um, I'm not actually going to use the percussion sounds today. I'm just going to use the voltages that come out of it when you set the knobs to different pitches. And so there is a jack called pitch. And if I just take my normal sound, and add voltage and then play it. And each of those knobs are just changing what voltage comes out as it gets to that step. Again, if all of this seems like I'm repeating myself, it's because I am. It doesn't matter what the control voltage source is, if it sends whatever this device is expecting to be the minimum and the maximum, and it sweeps through it in any way, it's going to do that thing. If you run it through an attenuator, it will do less of that thing as you turn the knob down. If you have an inverting attenuator or an attenuverter, uh, as you turn left of clockwise, it will start doing more of the signal, but upside down. Let's try that. We'll go, we'll go into an attenuator, and then we'll go back to pitch. And now we'll do less of it.
So I hope all these examples have helped you become a little more brave about diving into the world of control voltages. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any further questions, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like these or go to Sweetwater for all your musical instrument and pro audio needs.